Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the News Hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. For the Nevada Cannabis News Kurt Dukach, co-host Michael McCullough, and Perry is in Italy. In Alaska. Uh, no, he's in Ali- Italy. Italy. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. in Italy right now. Him and uh, Barbie went out there. So I'm sure he's not listening, but we wish yeah. you the best, oh, Perry, because <laughs> I know if I was in Italy, I wouldn't be listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't be listening to much on the net. That's for sure. So anyway, we have a, a, another week, and there's always uh, always cannabis in the news these days. It's just um, it, it is something that's come into the public consciousness and is not going away. So um, let's see what we have here. The one, one thing that caught my eye immediately, because we always try to look at local stuff first, um, is there, there was a, a local piece uh, that Democratic leader Harry Reid said he needs to know more about the subject of marijuana uh, in order to determine whether he's going to be for legalization or not in this November's election. And this uh, comes to us from rollcall.com, and that's a political website about dealings on Capitol Hill. And the author, the reporter on the article is Bridget Bowman. So, um, he, well, it, wasn't he a strong supporter of medical marijuana? And indeed, that's what, it, what he said. I support medical marijuana 100%, and I'm going to wait and see how the debate progresses progresses on recreational use of marijuana. Um, he said this to the uh, uh, Las Vegas Sun reporter uh, Megan Messerly, and uh, he addressed reporters on Tuesday while attending the opening of the First Med Health and Wellness Center Health Clinic in Las Vegas. Now, I don't know. That that sounds like it could be a dispensary, but I kind of think it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it is. I mean, very well the name could be, but it's it's also one of those places that that kind of subject is brought up because when you're talking about a health and wellness center, I mean, mm-hmm. this goes hand in hand with health and wellness. I mean, without a doubt. Yeah. It does. So, I mean, even if it's not specifically a cannabis related thing, it's related to cannabis just because of we all want to be healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and indeed, uh, Reed has has shown that he is supportive of this, as I just read this quote. But um, he's he's been very skeptical about legalization in the past. He sa- and he says, I'm very, very dubious and concerned now. And people better start making their case to me. They haven't done that. Uh, and so, and he said he's a huge fan of medical marijuana. He knows friends who have been benefited from using it, referring to its use, combating pain and suffering and extending life and which it does for for cancer patients or potentially does for cancer patients so the quote I want to go back to here is I'm very very dubious and concerned now and people better start making their case to me well you know Harry is still your senator for the state of Nevada <laughs> so well yeah that's one way of making the case to you but um, uh, a little bakshish here and there uh, goes a long way in political circles but um, he's still your senator uh, and Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, whatever flavor of political stripe you are, uh, he does represent the state of Nevada. So by all means, call him up. Call his office up. Write him an email. Get in yep, touch email. with him. And, and let him know how you feel. Let him know that uh, that if he's dubious and concerned, okay, let's assuage those concerns. Let talk, let's talk to him about, um, uh, about the therapeutic benefits, uh, not in a strictly medical sense, because People can use cannabis as a stress reliever without necessarily being patients on the program. And it's certainly a lot better than, than you know, hitting uh, four or five shots at the end of the day or highballs or a six pack of beer even. Uh, and so uh, I, I'd urge anyone listening to, um, to call his office up. And, and say, hey, this is all right. It's, it's a safe substance. But not only is it a safe substance, but how do you justify, after all these years, putting people in jail for nonviolent use of a, of a plant? 
and they can make all the, the arguments that they want. We've heard them all before, the, the gateway theory, uh, the broken windows theory, all these things. But in, in truth, um, anyone who listens to this broadcast is already on this side of the debate, except the occasional DEA agent. How are you doing there? Uh, and, and so um, get, get in touch with him. Get in touch with your politicians at every level and then tell, tell them we demand this reform at this point because it just doesn't make sense to put people in jail. We have the, the Bureau of Prisons, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, spends over $8 billion a year uh, incarcerating people. And, you know, I'm... I'm glad that there are certain violent people in there. I was glad when they took John Gotti, the crime boss, in and sent him off to Marion, Ohio. He was a good case on a on a on a more of a, a state level. I'm glad Charles Manson is still in jail. I, people like that need to be there, but for cannabis crimes. Absolutely not, especially when you look at the fact that cannabis sentences are on average longer than sentences for violent crime, assault, sexual abuse, burglaries, thefts, all these sort of things. It, it's an absurd situation. So you really need to uh, get a hold of Harry and say, you know, just chill out, Enough relax, is enough. Enough is enough. Yeah, yeah, thank you indeed. Turn, turn around, look around the people around you. I mean, just about, you know, what does they say, two-thirds of the of Americans are now using cannabis pretty much? Well, I, we, we did a story last week that says one in eight Americans uh, uh, says that they use cannabis on a regular basis. But that's based on uh, government surveys yep. uh, and, and Gallup poll. But people are not going to want to tell the government that they're using something that the government is going to throw them in jail for. You know, And studies that I've seen um, within the past decade say that 50 percent of Americans have um, uh, have admitted to using cannabis at some point in their lives. So if it's gone up to 63 percent, I wouldn't be surprised uh, because you look at the um, the support for medical cannabis over the last mm -hmm. 15 years and it's grown from the high 50s to 71 and now uh, it's over 81 percent uh, support the idea of medical and cannabis. and if if we do get rid of this you know this stigma and well not necessarily stigma, if we legalize this and mm -hmm. get rid of this classification i see that number jumping way 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 up on on the occasional user for the mm -hmm. recreational use because right now what's stopping a lot of people is the fear of getting caught it's it's not the fear of you know the dangers of this or the fact that they think that if they do this they're going to go use heroin or anything like that mm -hmm. they all know that that reefer madness is is not true we've lived we've heard it for you know most of our lives some people all of their lives and they've never yeah, seen especially the old guys <laughs> the camera there. you know and and they've never seen it happen you know to their friends mm -hmm. you know so the, the only thing stopping people from and we're talking a responsible adult use is what he's a, what he's again you know a, has a question about mm -hmm. we're talking you know about instead of going out on the weekend and getting blitzkrieg drunk and forgetting what you do and making really poor decisions going out and smoking a little bit of cannabis and enjoying yourself with and friends devouring bags of cheetos <laughs> yeah. um yeah, yeah you know and and that's the i th i think that is the the central point here that that we need to make and we need to stress to people and and why uh people are opposed to it because as you said it, it would be better for them to go out and smoke a bowl smoke a joint uh, eat a brownie on the weekend than, than go out and and get blazing drunk now the alcohol industry is well established in this country I mean you can go back to the the founding of the country and the uh, the whiskey rebellion uh, while George Washington was in office uh, and tried to put a federal tax on whiskey uh, and was the genesis of the whole moonshine uh, movement in in uh, uh, the Appalachian area of the country and it, I've heard more recently lawmakers say, well, alcohol is an established tradition in this country, as if hemp use wasn't, as if yeah. cannabis use wasn't. And the idea is, though, that if you are a consumer, a responsible, as you say, consumer of cannabis, then you are not likely to be mixing that. I, I recall back in the party days of the, uh, of the 80s, uh, seeing people, hearing people, uh, they'd, they'd 
they'd get their they'd get their load on with booze and but they wouldn't want to pass out so they do a couple of lines of coke and they pick themselves back up and then they would have some more booze and they and, and back and forth and back and forth but I I have not we've been, the the weekend parties for example and many others that I've been to parties at champs and the like you don't see booze at that party you don't or those parties you don't see even a lot of wine at those parties well, you 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 do but it's 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 very few in between and the use is responsible because mm -hmm. the 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 cannabis users have the responsible you know they're they're in control of their facilities they mm -hmm. know what decisions they're making and they're like hey i don't i don't want to be drunk you know I've, I've got something that's making me perfectly happy already you know so most of them are just drinking it i think out of habit mm -hmm. not so much to get drunk it's just they like to have that drink in their hand or or depending you know. on who you are like the police for example uh are known to be very not all but a goodly number of police are known to be uh, very heavy drinkers when, when they're off duty, some even when they're on duty. Um, but it, it's the idea that they don't have an alternative. Mm -hmm. That's what they have to do. And there are so many industries where people don't have an alternative. We read stories about airline pilots who, uh, uh, right here in Vegas a couple of years ago, who they were at knocking back shots the night before, and then 8 a.m. they show up to, to be flying out of McCarran and and so the the booze industry does not want the legalization of cannabis because it, they see it as a threat to their potential profit and um, I we've seen at these parties uh, and uh, as you pointed out if people are using cannabis they are less likely to be using uh, alcohol in any form beer wine hard liquor uh and and so the the established alcohol industry um is very afraid of that and they don't want to see widespread use of cannabis so i uh, it, it's a crazy situation and it, it's up to us to all register to vote and get out there and change it for ourselves because longtime um activist jack herrer who uh, a number of strains have been named after uh famously said that the worst effect of cannabis is what happens when you get caught with it and that's exactly, exactly the point it. we're making mm -hmm. and speaking of getting caught with it uh we had a big fight this weekend you know, the we, Uf I didn't even know we were mad at each other. <laughs> now, the UFC was in town. Oh, this was a okay. big thing. I mean, we had a couple of dispensaries were actually offering all sorts of specials because of the UFC fight mm -hmm. in town and everything. And uh, it was uh, it was Nate Diaz was fighting, who is mm -hmm. the is the brother of Nick Diaz, who has been caught a couple of times, three times now, for using cannabis as a performance enhancing drug. He was the latest big case that we were talking about, probably about six seven months ago on Nevada Cannabis News. Mm -hmm. Well. Nate fought, Nate lost, and in his post-fight interview, he pulled out his CBD vape pen, mm -hmm. and he took a couple hits of CBD vape because, I mean, you look at the guy, he just got beat up. I mean, you could see it in his face, just the swelling and the inflammation, he, you could tell he was just in a fight, and that's what he was in. And he was using CBD after the fight, after his, his post-fight drug test, Mm -hmm. And during the interview, and they, they asked him about it on camera, what do you got? And he said, it's CBD oil. It's really good for the inflammation just mm -hmm. to get myself right after a fight. And now the UFC is talking about possibly suspending him for a year. For use of a substance which is legal in mm -hmm. all 50 states because the CBD pens are not psychoactive in any way. Yep. They're not, uh, they're not uh, banned by uh, the, the federal scheduling or anything like that. Yep, it's perfectly safe. It's 50 state legal. You can buy it anywhere. Ship and it it's anywhere. true. The CBD part of the medicine is really good for the inflammation. And, and you know, not so much as the pain killing effect of THC would have, but the inflammation and that which is you can see he had. And so they're talking about giving him a one year suspension now mm -hmm. because in UFC terms, the fight starts six hours before that bell rings and six hours after the bell rings. So in their eyes, even though in the fight. he was in competition still, even though he had already taken a post fight drug screening, mm -hmm. he's still in competition. So he d even even if he passes that drug screening, he's still they're talking they can suspend him because he was still fighting. 
And if they had taken a couple of Advil, nobody yeah. would have said anything. And with him doing it on camera right there, it's as, it's as good as a failed drug so all, test all in the their eyes. they need, yeah. So <laughs> even if it wasn't CBD and he was just, you know, joking or doing a media ploy, trying to get the word of CBD out there, we don't know. I mean, it could have been anything in that mm -hmm. pen, you know, because it's a pen. We don't know what's in it. And the thing is, uh, he was taking this, as you say, for, um, for its anti-inflammatory properties and you know having worked in this community the medical community uh, with patients for a long long time I've done a lot of research on this and inflammation in general is one of the most serious causes in the human body of debilitation of aging and ultimately of complications that, that lead to death because when your body inflames in areas it, it, it cannot properly respond and and its own healing mechanisms don't work well and so um, you can look at studies of any number of people uh, at end of life who have used uh, these non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs uh, like you know and any of the common stuff ibuprofen acetaminophen um, even uh, even aspirin uh, and they wind up uh, having health complications at down the road and some of these people have been using these things for years and years and decades uh, and mankind has always had a safer substance available right up until oh, about 77 years ago or so uh, 79 years ago maybe now uh, when uh, when they banned cannabis and to my mind, if you can do something uh, that is effective at pain relief, that is effective at helping your body uh, heal itself, then nobody, no boxing commission, no government, nobody has the right to tell you that you don't have a basic human right to treat your own pain and your your own body. And so it's it's a crazy thing. And they're, they're going to take away this guy's livelihood for a year. Yeah, they're they're talking about it potentially. It's a, it's it's being it's being investigated right now. So I but it I mean it's 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 just it's frustrating to see stuff like this. You know, mm -hmm. he's not hurting anyone. But well, you know, in your point, it the he could have probably got an anti-inflammatory shot before, during, right after the, yeah. from his trainers, and that would have been okay. Mm -hmm. You know, even though those steroids, we know what steroids do to people, they're awful. They have all sorts of side effects, mm -hmm. but that would have been perfectly fine. I'm sure that if his trainer came in and said, we need to give you, you know, some, you know, shots here, some cortisone, whatever it is, you know, that, that would have been okayed by the UFC because it's not considered a performance enhancing drug. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just sickening. I mean, it didn't affect his performance. His performance is over. His only performance now is getting healthy and talking to the camera and getting ready for the yeah, yeah. getting ready for his next bout <laughs> explain why he lost you know <laughs> it's incredible and and the hypocrisy that's there and i i don't know the people who are behind the ufc i don't know who they are what they do in their time off and, and all you know but uh they're likely either taking a drink or two uh or more uh afterwards and celebrating what they're doing as they're condemning this person or even more hypoc hypocritically you know since, as you point out so many americans uh have been uh have now admitted to using cannabis uh or, or not only admitting it but in some cases coming out of the closet and asserting that they have a, a right mm -hmm. to do so. But you've got to wonder, with an organization as large as the UFC, how many of those people who aren't getting tested are, mm -hmm. are toking up well, you know, it says it, it, sa it says here in the article from the Review Journal that marijuana is only banned in competition. Mm -hmm. So basically, unless you fail a pre-fight drug screening or a post-fight <laughs> drug screening, then but, it's not a banned substance. But my understanding is they don't, they don't screen, they don't drug screen for CBD, cannabidiol. They they screen for THC, the mm -hmm. psychoactive substance. So um, I don't know whether their standard drug tests are even going to show it. They're going to, they're essentially mm -hmm. going to convict him uh, on his own word. You know, he's he's made a statement against his own interest, and they're they're going to believe that even even if he later retracts that and says, oh, "I was joking about it." Yeah. So it's a, it's a crazy situation. Yeah. So. Anyway, I think it's time uh, to take a break and take a breather, and we'll be back in just a minute or so.
From the soothing sounds of a water wall to the warmth, wood interior, and beautiful artwork, as soon as you enter Sahara Wellness, you are welcomed into a relaxing space where we strive to provide our patients with a healthy balance of mind, body, and spirit. That balance is achieved through a compassionate and knowledgeable staff who possesses both a passion for the medical cannabis industry as well as unrivaled dedication to assisting those in need of a natural method of pain relief. Our bud tenders are available to assist patients in selecting cannabis-based medicine that best suits their needs from our selection of flowers waxes, CBD lotions, and delicious edibles. Sahara Wellness is located at 420 East Sahara Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out our entire menu at www.420sahara.com. Attention medical marijuana patients. Did you know that your medicine could contain pesticides, heavy metals, and even mold? Are you really sure that you're getting the same potency every single time? Well, the answer to that question is simple. DigiPath Labs. DigiPath Labs is a state-approved laboratory run by scientists. So look for the DigiPath Labs quality seal on your next medicine and on the door of your favorite dispensary. To learn more, go to digipathlabs.com. That's D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. You know, it, welcome. It, it, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked on this issue. I want to, I do want to get right into this thing because you know we were just talking in the last segment uh, about how this UFC fighter was potentially going to. Um, uh, to be sanctioned or, or um, suspended for up to a year. Um, while in Connecticut, uh, and we get this story from uh, Dave Collins over at the Associated Press, and a Connecticut state worker w who was fired after he was caught smoking marijuana on the job uh, was punished too harshly and should get his job back, according to the state Supreme Court of Connecticut. Now, this fellow, and who he is doesn't really matter, so we won't name him, uh, but it, but he was fired from his maintenance job at the University of Connecticut Health Center in Farmington in 2012 after a police officer caught him smoking pot in a state-owned vehicle. Oh, the horrors. Um, he had no previous disciplinary problems since he'd been hired in 1998, so that's 14 clean years of, you know, of, of no infractions, uh, and he had received favorable job evaluations according to his union. Uh, he was arrested, but then the charges were later dismissed. So state officials said the, uh, the firing of this New Hartford resident was the only appropriate penalty for his conduct, and not doing so would send a bad message to employers, which is why we can't legalize pot, because it would send a bad message to kids. It, it's absolutely crazy. So the, this guy took the, um, took the case to arbitration, and the arbitrator disagreed with the state of Connecticut, and he overturned the firing, and uh, saying that this fellow should be suspended without pay for six months and subject to random drug testing for a year after he returned to work. Well, the state appealed, and a superior court judge overturned the arbitrator's decision on the grounds that it violated Connecticut's public policy against marijuana use. Um, and then the, uh, the SEIU, uh, of whom this man was a member, uh, appealed the judge's ruling to the Connecticut Supreme Court. And all seven of the, of the um, boy, I want to say Nevada, so <laughs> I'm so used to this out here, the Connecticut Supreme Court, uh, all of them uh, agreed that the lower court judge was wrong to er overturn the arbitrator's ruling, saying that while state policy on drug use in the workplace allows for firing, it does not require it. Justice has also said that judicial second guessing of arbitration awards is uncommon and should be reserved only for extraordinary circumstances. Uh, he said the miscon and and they kind of cover themselves. Uh, the Chief Justice uh, uh, Chase T. Rogers wrote in his decision, the misconduct at issue was completely unacceptable and we do not condone it. Well, fine, you don't condone it. But at the same time, he wrote, by the arbitrator's estimation, his, the, the um, this person's personal qualities and overall record indicate that he is a good candidate for a second chance. Uh, moreover, the discipline that the arbitrator imposed was severe and sends a message to others who might consider committing similar misconduct with that painful consequences will result. And, uh, you know, th this whole case, it, this is a tough one because you've got a guy who is smoking in a state vehicle while working so it's kind of hard to defend that 
Yeah. Yet at the same time, if if he were smoking a cigarette, likely no one would have said a thing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's kind of hard to like if it was his car. You mm-hmm. could kind of fight that it's my private space, regardless if it's on public property. It's my private space in my car. Mm-hmm. You know, I bought it. I pay for it. This is, you know, it's not public. Nobody can just come in here. But with a state vehicle and being a state employee, that mm-hmm. makes a, a little different situation there. But fortunately, and I, and I would see this ruling as um, as another small step in the progression towards normalization of this substance cannabis uh, because you have a you have a state supreme court saying no 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 you took too harsh of a penalty on this guy uh, or imposed too harsh of a penalty and the prosecutor dis- declined to prosecute it so he has no criminal record but putting someone out of their job has long term consequences uh, and so it, it's good to see that um, that the supreme court of Connecticut uh, decided that you know, you don't have to go that far, and as they said, it's it's you know, it's not required. And I, I do see this as a as a step forward, even a small one. No, it really should be up to the employer, regardless. You know, whereas in another state, Colorado, <laughs> boy, they're going in a totally different direction, right? Um, and uh, we get from uh, Westward, which is the um, uh, the alternative weekly out of Denver, uh, written by Lindsay Bartlett, um, uh, news about the Colorado cannabis growers who will go head to head in the grow off. Now that sounds like something interesting, and you know we we've had. A, a, Across the nation, across the world, various cannabis cups, and certainly the the cannabis cup in Amsterdam every year is the uh, is the the center of the cannabis world when it happens. And so, um, uh, in Colorado, uh, uh, Shum Shah, founder of the Grow Off, uh, says that that there's a new competition in town that aims to crown the best cultivator in Colorado. We hope you guys are ready to grow some really fine weed. And the Grow Off is designed as a cannabis competition for the industry. In its inaugural year, uh, the three founders plan to send a mystery strain of solid genetics, non-hermaphroditic, to ca- of cannabis to 50 different growers around the state. And after documenting the growing process over the course of six months, the contest will determine who qualifies as the best marijuana cultivator in Colorado. Now, this is so, really yeah. interesting as yeah. compared to any any other cup that uh, or, or Grow Off event that we've seen because everybody's starting with the same basic stock you know and so it's it's not like this one's got lemon haze and that one's got sour diesel yeah, and, the other and one's got, you're not you're you know, not just judging purple. you're not just judging the end the end product which is how most cannabis cups are mm-hmm. the it's the end product and it's the best of the best of that plant that they turn in for the for the mm-hmm. competition whereas this looks like it's going to be more judged on how you grow it well but and what more you importantly it, it starts everybody at the same starting line mm-hmm. I mean because you'll have a higher yielding or lower yielding plants plants with higher THC or this and that and and which will affect the personal preferences of the judge uh, or judges so here uh, you know everybody is is starting equal because they're all gonna get clones or seeds of the of the same strain and uh, they're going to go from there and I, I actually think it makes a lot of sense uh, to if you want to have bragging rights that I'm the best grower well you've got to start on a level playing field so um, sadly though uh, any of you listeners here who live in the state of Nevada you're not going to be able to be part of this this is uh, uh, this is something for uh, Colorado providers and uh, you don't want to be going to Colorado getting that clone bringing it back here and then bringing your finished meds back because uh, that just wouldn't work out too well for you um, so uh, it, it, it's just a, an interesting concept and I think that even though this is the first of its kind I don't think it'll be the last I think as uh, we have more mainstream uh, the mainstreaming of marijuana that you're going to find that um, other competitions pick this up, and they, mm-hmm. and they might be with indicas or with sativas or with hybrids or whatever. And and uh, I, I just I, I think it's a, another good step forward. And this this is something that we could actually almost implement within our systems here in Nevada. It mm-hmm. would just have to be like one grower sends out, you know, to all the other growers, you know, the strain, um, and that grower isn't one who's competing, you know, or we'd have to co- have it come basically from a patient being mm-hmm. donated in, and. 
I could see it as a big marketing thing for them. It's like, come try our, you know, you know, whatever we name it, at our place, you know, and they could sell sell mm -hmm. legally to the patients mm -hmm. their, you know, thing, and then the patients could judge which ones they think were the best by going to all the different dispensaries and trying them all. So th this is a good idea, but I I've got one for weekend to maybe work on. Uh, and instead of just having a grow off with this one strain, let's do a triathlon or let's do a decathlon and and uh, give growers three strains or six strains or ten strains and see how they do a, a across well, a range of them. We, we could do a triathlon with the same strain too, where you have the best flower, the best edible from the flower, and mm -hmm. the best concentrate from that flower. Well, this sounds like a weekend project. <laughs> Work on, so, so I mean, but it all still be coming from that same flower, you know. So who yes. who comes up with the best edible with that, you know? Because edibles are really can be matched to the flavor and the terpenes and the strains, mm -hmm. and that's what makes a really a high end top notch edible. I mean, anybody can take it and, and make it into oil and throw it into brownies. That's easy enough. But to to take to take that flower and 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 work it into that recipe and use the flavors and the smells of the flour mm -hmm. in the recipe itself. That's where the real art comes in. And then concentrates, there's so many different ways and styles now and you know, just to come up with which one tastes the best and hits the best. Well, with, with edibles, a, a lot of people and, and a lot of commercial uh, places will triple process their butter and strain it and restrain it, heat it, restrain it again and all to take the cannabis taste away and mm -hmm. and so even uh, if there were uh, subtle flavors uh, you're losing it because in taking every bit of the plant material away and then taking the butter solids away and just leave, using the clarified butter you are getting down to a basic oil without uh, without a lot of flavor and um, uh, as far as edibles go well I mean that as far as I should say as far as concentrates go the technology is out there already and I know of companies that are using it where they will as they're processing the cannabis for the oil that they take um, and they're able to separate out the individual terpenes 22 of them and uh, they can take those terpenes which are the the flavor components and uh, recombine them in any way that they want so that they can get almost any flavor that they want uh, so it's uh, it, it would be interesting to see if, if we could uh, you know if, if we could have something like this here in Nevada, and there's no reason we shouldn't. Yeah, it would, it would have to, yeah, I guess it could, well, we're allowed to home grow, so we could also do it with the home cultivation, but I think I think they could also do this within the MME systems also. It, so. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to see it on, on both levels. Yep. So let's see, what else have we got going on here? Well, a national poll, surprise, surprise, a majority supports legalizing marijuana. This comes to us uh, from Politico.com and author Nick Gass. And, and um, we've, we've seen this and we've reported uh, on the program before that uh, slightly more than half, that 54% uh, of Americans have said that uh, marijuana use should be made legal across the country. Now, if Hillary got 54%, she'd consider it a great victory. If Trump got 54%, he'd consider it, you know, a landslide. And, and in fact, um, when George uh, W. Bush was reelected in 2004 and he won the election with 50.1%, he said that that gave him a mandate for change and he had the support of the American people behind him. So, you know, this is significantly larger than that margin. Uh, and, and yet, people across Harry Reid as we were saying in the earlier so oh, I'm, I'm not too sure about that uh, you know but so many people do support this that it is inevitable as is the tide and it is going to change and I, I, I remember uh, in growing up uh, uh, Everything I learned, I, I, everything I knew I learned from Star Trek, or needed to learn, I knew from Star Trek. <laughs> and there was this episode, Mirror Mirror, in the alternate universe. And, uh, and just before he's about to leave that alternate universe, he challenges the, the evil, you know, uh, bearded Spock. He says that, you know, any system that, uh, you know, that, that the Empire was bound to fail. And so any resources that were spent uh, and in continuing that system which was inevitably going to fail it, it, it was illogical it was wasteful and if the if this is going to happen then not
person should go into jail for this. Not one more person should have um, uh, a conviction, uh, something which will prevent them from getting higher education, uh, from getting jobs, from, from getting, uh, getting into public housing or anything like that. And so, you know, what we see is that there are clear majorities uh, across demographic groups. And, you know, I said a little earlier, uh, I, I, I misstated, I said that 81% of uh, the American people now support the use of medical marijuana. No, actually, it's 89%. Uh, you can't get 89% of Americans to agree, agree on anything, even that pizza is good. Uh, you know, and so this is, that debate is over. Yep, and, and yet, yeah, where is it going? <laughs> yeah, the other 10% of those people. Or DEA agents. Yeah, they're DEA agents. Jailers. And, and people are crazy anyway. <laughs> Defense lawyers and yeah. uh, various people like that. It's, um, and, this, and this is why, this is why personally, I'm, I'm on the side of question to 100%. It's, it's not a perfect bill, um, but it doesn't move us back. And this is going to stop at least the people in Nevada from going to jail for a plant. Uh, you know, then the only, after, if question two passes, the only people that will be going to jail are the people who are, are abusing this plant, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, who are strictly in it for the profit and are still out there selling it, you know, when they're not supposed to be. And, you know, this will stop all those people that are just using it responsibly from getting in trouble. So, you know. Although I, I, I disagree. I, I don't think those people, even if they're doing it, commercially and all should should be going to jail if 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 they're selling yeah. Ill illicit to the black market then they should be hit with civil penalties because the taxes that they should have paid that they didn't mm -hmm. pay and a penalty on those taxes but why should the rest of us have to pay to keep these people in prison yeah you know, and I, I wasn't saying that they I, I'm I don't believe that they're really breaking any real laws there either by selling cannabis because they're really not hurting people but the, it, the, to say it, it is still in this law, it will still be against the law to do that. Um, I don't believe they should go to jail for it. Mm -hmm. You know, n uh, none of us really should ever go to jail for this. I mean, if you if you take a gun and you're holding up somebody who has it, or you're going and robbing somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, who has it, yes, you should Violent go to jail. Behavior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't care what it's for. I mean, if if somebody you know breaks into your house and you you got guns in your in your house because you're trying to protect your house and you just so happen to have mm -hmm. cannabis i don't believe that should be a crime and, if you, and if whereas you, you federally know, it's a five-year enhancement yeah a sentencing i mean enhancement. If, if you're pulling the gun and shooting people for no reason or just shooting blind because you think you're being raided that's a different different kind of story mm -hmm. um but you know i don't i don't believe that people should go to jail but i don't believe also that we should not vote for question two just because it doesn't allow people to grow ungodly amounts of cannabis for you know personal use or whatever it is i mean it does allow for six plants there is the 25 mile rule which we all know can be beat i mean mm -hmm. it's 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 a garbage rule um but and ultimately it'll be overturned in court because it, yeah. it um it, it's it's ultimately unconstitutional in my view because uh the full faith and credit uh act uh, the uh section of the Constitution uh, and the equal protection in the 14th and 15th Amendments more importantly say you've got to treat everybody the same way give them the same due process so you can't say okay well you live on this side of the line so you can grow it and I live on this side of the line so I can't mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately I, I believe that's going to be overturned that mm -hmm. part of, of, of the of the um, initiative if, if it gets passed um, so I would not use that as any reason to, to not well, vote for that's 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 one of the biggest reasons i'm hearing pushback from from people in the community even you know people that are patients which mm -hmm. which people got to also remember this doesn't affect us as a patient it doesn't what what i right. have going on with my medical right now it doesn't change and you know just because the there's a 25 mile rule well look at it this way right now there's a whole state rule mm -hmm. right now nobody in the state can grow yep. so this is loosening restrictions it might not be loosening them to the point where you want them to be but it is a loosening of restrictions and you're going to vote against the bill because it's loosening restrictions i don't i it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. like it's not perfect but it's not tightening any restrictions on anybody it's loosening them all up and making things 
easier for us. Before we used the Apollo program to land uh, astronauts on the moon, we had the Gemini program, and before that we had the Mercury program. You have to move incrementally in, in certain areas, and, and certainly uh, this is one of them, where you still have a lot of people who are, are uh, not understanding it. Once again, referring back to our, our uh, senior state senator, Harry Reid, saying he's dubious. Um, but, you know, we didn't get 747s before biplanes, and, and so if people are saying, oh, it's not enough, great. Let's, let's go that far, and let's put another yeah. initiative on the next election yeah, ballot. You're going to have to get this step first, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, before you can take that next step. And, you know, you're not always – this is the government, and I say, tell this to a lot of people. I mean, the government isn't running a sprint. Yeah, they're, they're, they're lucky if they're even in a jog half the time. Most yeah. of the time, they're just sitting around talking about things and not getting anything done. Mm -hmm. So to get something done in, in, in little chunks, that's how you got to do it. The government moves very slowly. And I would point out to people who object to that that this is exactly what happened in our own NRS 453A, the state medical marijuana law, over the past few years. People were all up in arms and did not want to have uh, what was Senate Bill 374 uh, passed in 2013 because there was a sunset provision that said um, by April of 2016, all patient rights to, to grow their own medicine would go away. And uh, so a lot of people opposed it for that, but fortunately, the bill passed. We now have dispensaries, we now have cultivation and all this. And in speaking with the uh, uh, sponsor, a uh, friend of the show, Tick Siegerblom, uh, said that I did what I could get passed. I could not overcome law enforcement objections and the conservative upstate senators and put a sunset and, and just allow people to grow indefinitely. So I had to put that, um, that sunset into it in 2016. He said, but I'm go still going to fight for it. And indeed, in the 2015 uh, session, uh, Tick was able to get language inserted into a bill uh, that extended that sunset out to 2018. And he has been saying all along he wants to get rid of uh, restriction on patients cultivating entirely, but he passes what he can. He knows that sometimes it's a game of inches. You can't make a first down every, or you can't, you know, you can't make the 10 yards for the first down every time. Sometimes you're, you're just making half a yard. Sometimes you're just making a little bit, and, and we have to be happy that we're even able to move the ball that much farther. Yeah, and we're not getting sacked. <laughs> no, but we will get sacked if we don't go to our next commercial and then have our sponsors who are graciously paying for this program. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijin, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine. Please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at EssenceVegas.com. You can also call us at 702-978-7575. Once again, the number is 702-978-7575. Nevada Pure is a premier vertically integrated medical marijuana enterprise which offers top quality medical marijuana, great customer service, in a safe private environment. We carry a wide selection of medical cannabis strains. Our knowledgeable staff will insist you in finding the correct strain for your condition. Our trained professional staff can educate you on various strains for your condition, methods of consumption, responsible cannabis use, and the wellness benefits of cannabis. We aim to help patients achieve a better quality of life. Medical marijuana is a medicine, not an intoxicant. It's about a patient's well-being being at Nevada Pure. From the moment you make an appointment with us, your care, health, and well-being is our priority. Nevada Pure is located at 4360 Boulder Highway, Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out their entire menu at www.nevadapure.com. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. So, what we were just talking about the majority of people on the side of cannabis, and we we're talking about some uh, employment issues mm -hmm. you had another well there, there's a, a number of things that are that it, it all kind of interconnects in this issue um, you know and 
one of the one of the reasons why it's so difficult for people to gain employment and all when, when they've been consuming is because cannabis is a schedule one drug uh, under the, uh, you know, the the United States uh, um, federal guidelines and uh, we most likely anybody who's listening to this show uh, knows that uh, just a couple of weeks ago the DEA uh, refused to reschedule cannabis uh, out of schedule one despite ample evidence and they were saying that uh, that not enough studies have been conducted in this and that and and so you saw in a lot of the press but that don't they hold ahead. a patent they hold a patent on three <laughs> cannabinoids as neuroprotectants, and though that cap, though, those patents were granted in 2003. Yeah. So, so those of you that have been seeing people all over social media holding up their hand with the numbers on the hand, that's what that is. That's the patent for, for cannabis as medicine that the, the U.S. government holds. So what they're trying to say is talk to the hand because huh. you hold a patent on this. So that's, that was right after this DEA thing that all came out. Everyone was holding their hand up with the U.S. patent number on their hand. Well, I guess it shows I'm getting old. I don't spend as much time on social media as you do. But, um, you know, I, I saw a lot of the mainstream media on this trying to spin this that, oh, it's a step forward because you're, you're allowing for more research and you're allowing for more sites to grow uh, cannabis in order to be researched. And um, I've, I've spoken to other people in the industry uh, and read a lot of other things that say, you know, that's just essentially a, a, a false ray of sunshine, that it's not, uh, it's not such a big thing that that anybody should get excited about it and what the, the DEA uh, in their statement said that they've concluded the best way to satisfy the current researcher demand for a variety of strains of marijuana is to increase the number of federally authorized marijuana grows but um, you know the the problem is uh, one of one of the, these fellows researching it, Ryan Vandry, who's a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Johns Hopkins University, which is one of the most widely respected and prestigious medical schools in the country. He's been studying cannabis for years, but he's never needed much marijuana to actively study the drug, and and he says that adding growers will make very little change going forward in my research. The problem is not lack of supply, it's the regulatory hoops that we have to jump through to obtain it. And of course, jumping through hoops is standard in any scientific research, but he says the process is unnecessarily laborious for cannabis studies. Um, researchers go through the regular steps of, of uh, to approve any drug research, secure grant funding, obtain scientific review of the study's merits, and then get approval from either the board or the or the FDA. Um, but studying marijuana, which is still Schedule 1, uh, means that they must obtain a license from both the federal government and from the state where the study is going to be located. And so they, to do so, a lab must have stringent requirements such as having a safe on premises to to store uh, this dangerous substance and and many university labs don't have that kind of uh, uh, don't have safes in them because they they just don't need them um, especially in a university lab I've, I've seen the stuff that they get for the research from our good friend dr. Sue Sicily into the show and uh, <laughs> The, the college students have much better stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> they're not, they're not going to be breaking into the lab to steal, steal these sticks and stems and, and seeds that, that they're giving them. Mm -hmm. you know? that's, that's what she says is the real holdup is NIDA. And the fact is you can, you can put in a request for medicine, and they, there is no time limit on this. They, they can just sit on somebody's mm -hmm. desk for years. And then when you do get the medicine, the stuff they give you is not you know quality medicine to do any testing on it's and like she showed me she showed me they just take the whole plant there is no trimming process and they take the whole plant and just grind it up so you're getting the stalks the stems they don't care if it's seeds. male or female yeah the and, stems and which you know and all that gives you headaches and yeah it, and it's just not um not conducive to a, a, a positive experience or a positive research experience. Yep. And plus they're not able to get the correct strains. Like she says, I need a I need a two to one C B D or a one or two mm -hmm. to one THC and they don't even have any clue, you know, how to how to produce that that correct medicine. Whereas here, you know, I've already seen through our Nevada program 
we have the two to one THC, we have the two to one CBD, we have the 50 fifties, we mm-hmm. have the high CBD, we have the high THC, we have just about anything you could want into that. And in research, they don't, yeah. they, they, they don't have access to the true medicinal end of it. Like as, as even we as patients have here in Nevada. I, re- I remember meeting uh, LV Musica, uh, who is one of the remaining patients uh, on the federal NIDA program, which is the federal medical marijuana program. I think there are only four of these people left big alive. Can. And yeah, I, I, I met her a few years ago, and she would get a big can every month from the government, uh, 300 grams uh, of pre-rolled cannabis joints. Uh, and she said she never she never smoked them. She said that the po- the quality was so poor, all the all all that she could do was just, uh, you know, unwrap them, throw them into butter or something like that, and and use it for edibles. And anything that she actually had for relief of her her severe glaucoma, and she's legally blind as a result of it, uh, would come from different people who would just donate good quality cannabis to her. You know, part of the problem here is doing these studies now. Still take it's in Schedule One. Takes a year uh, to get um, approval from the from the federal government like the FDA but then it goes over to the DEA for a separate approval and there's no time limit on how long the DEA has to hold on to this stuff and some people I, I've read uh, it, it's years they've been waiting for answers uh, the, the fellow I just mentioned here said his Vandry said his last study took a year and a half to be approved uh, on that on that first step and then He's still waiting again. So we know that the the um, the, the DEA uh, does everything that they can to um, to protect their turf, to protect their budgeting. And nobody should be surprised at this, or that they refuse to to reschedule. So it's just crazy situations, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I was just reading a story. You know, the Olympics just ended. Mm-hmm. You know, and congratulations, United States and Michael Phelps. Jeez. That guy was going to retire. Ah, that you know? <laughs> dope smoke. <laughs> yeah, fiend. What? How yeah, dare It just he. makes you lazy and unproductive. Oh my God! What are you but doing? at the same time, it's performance enhancing. Yeah. What do you brought home like another five sports. gold and a silver mm-hmm. this this time, and just you know, just I mean, no, I'm close to that. But on a, on a side note, the Olympics have come to accept marijuana. Ever since 2012 and 2013, they have loosened, the, the World Anti-Doping Agency has loosened its rules against cannabis use for athletes. And we saw it with the Russian team. I mean, they pretty much allowed the Russian team to compete even though they were doping. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's got to that point. Um, right now, there is no intent, no longer any intent to stop athletes from smoking in the days and the weeks leading up to competition, but to prevent cannabis use on the day of competition. So that's that's what the Olympics have kind of gone to with cannabis. So mm-hmm. we are seeing these changes slowly come through. And your Olympics, that's a that's a worldwide thing. You know, mm-hmm. that's not just America. That's that's the whole world. You know, saying that hey, we don't mind if our athletes are smoking a little pot on the weekends and this and that, as long as they're not using it when they're performing. Although it's interesting that you mentioned the Russians and of course the uh, some of the Russian track and field. Uh, track and field people were um, uh, banned from the Olympics and they're not being allowed to take place in the the para Olympics that are that are now underway because of this whole doping scandal uh, and so and why is that it, it seems that they they're in this because the the sponsors of the Russian athletic team uh, or and and the government was fine with them using these steroids or other things to to dope up and yet at the same time in the United Nations where uh, people have been trying to go for reform the staunchest opponent of reform is the Russian government and the Russian government does not want any drug reform cannabis or anything else like that but hypocritically when it comes to Getting some gold medals here. Some steroids are fine. So. Steroids are fine. It, so. It's a, a crazy situation. Um, but gee, if we had um, if we had a general legalization, they could be making buku bucks making cannabis infused vodka. So mm-hmm. 
I don't get the point. No. Uh, we're about to wrap up, but but we got a party coming up. Yep, this Sunday, the 28th. It's over at uh, 4525 TP Lane. You can find it on our website. That's up this, in the Northwest. Yep, this is a patient fundraiser. This uh, We're doing this to raise money for people that are in need, people that can't work veterans uh we you know we pay for their cars i was just at the doctor's office today and i took care of three more one of them a 27 year old uh a veteran who's disabled in service in service disability so you know these are the kind of people that we we love to help i mean this poor guy went out there put his life on the line for us you know he didn't really fight in any big wars but he was out there and he got disabled serving our country and those are the people that we can stands up and gets behind on and by this. coming to this party and and helping we can fundraise because there's a cover charge um, by doing this you are also supporting those veterans you are also helping these people uh, get back to some semblance of normalcy in their life mm -hmm. So, yeah, so come on out and join us this weekend. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And uh, it is a pool party. So, you know, in the great words of our good friend Towelie, don't forget to bring a towel. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to bring a bathing suit. But don't bring a towel. But don't forget your towel. <laughs> so, and with that, you know, check us out on our website, www.wecan702.org. It's been great talking with you, and uh, we'll see we'll you next week. See you next time.